What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a little bit of a look at another ridiculous level 7 Digimon. I'll tell you something for nothing. I showed you Agamon Bonds of Courage the other day. I told you how it was amazing. And I stand by that. Good gracious, that's an amazing card. Well, today, we need to have a little bit of a look at Gabumon Bond of Friendship, another card which I don't like it as much as I like Agamon Bond of Courage, but come on. I don't know if I'm ever going to like a card as much as that one, but I'll tell you this for nothing. I like this card, ladies and gentlemen. I like it a lot. So what we've got here is a 14 cost to play normally, 3 cost to Digivolve, 14,000 power, which is cheap to Digivolve. The 14 cost 40,000 power, we generally expect 15,15 from a level 7, but this is in the realms of possibility. But the 3 cost to Digivolve, that is cheap. That is less than we would generally expect. But of course, it is the skills we're really worried about here. And what we've got is a skill whereby when you attack once during your turn, if you have a Tamer in play... Activate this Digimon. We're going to look at a, a Gabumon and a Tamer and all of that. And you're going to realize that we actually do need Tamers in play when we're playing these cards. So I like this. This is cool. This isn't an absolutely over-the-top, ridiculous, stunning attack or ability. Because we, we've seen it before. Like, if you look at the start of that Metal Garurumon, and I showed you just a couple days ago, a new deck, which is actually in the BT5 format in Japan, winning with that. And that, when you attack, once during your turn, you make yourself active. And this is that, but only if you've got a Tamer in play. It is a good skill, don't get me wrong. Making yourself active is one of the best skills in the game, as far as I'm concerned. And now what we've basically got here is a 14,000 power Digimon that is going to make itself active. This is awesome. It's not game-breaking in the way I think Agamon Bonds of Courage is, but it's still a very cool skill. The other skill we've got here is when you attack, and this is not limited to once during your turn, so if you can make it active and you've already got a skill that makes it active, when you attack, you choose one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon and return it to the bottom of their deck, trashing all evolution sources from that Digimon. Yes. This is a very good skill indeed. And if you take these two skills together, it really starts looking quite good. Because the Metal Garurumon makes itself active, but that's all it does. This makes itself active, but in theory you're attacking twice. So you're taking out two security cards, blah, blah, blah. But also you're getting rid of two level 5 or lower Digimon and putting them back to the bottom of their deck. Now, to be fair, Agamon when you attack... You delete a Digimon with 13,000 power or lower. And I think that is way more impactful than taking a level 5 or lower and returning it to the bottom of your opponent's deck. But this is still a nice little skill. And like I say, you should be activating it twice during your turn. You're starting off with 14,000 power. You shouldn't be deleted if you hit any security cards. You know, unless you hit like a really big level 7, you should be good. So it's kind of cool. I don't like it anywhere near as much as I like Agamon Bond of Courage, but I think this is a very good, I mean, at least a four Wassy card. I don't think it's massively over the top stunning as it is, but I think it's a very good card. I think it's a very competent card. And I think if you're attacking twice and getting rid of two level five Digimon, that is a very good card. Four Wassies is way too low, isn't it? Sorry. But we got a new Gabumon coming in here as well. Now, stats-wise, we've got a free cost to play normally, zero cost to Digivolve, 2,000 power, which is exactly what we would expect from your average level three with a skill. But it's got both an inheritable and a non-inheritable skill. Once during your turn, when you play Matt Ashida, gain a memory. Cool. What we've got here, and there is a Matt Ashida team we're going to look at in a moment. He looks too old and it's weird and it freaks me out just a little bit. But when you play Matt Ashida, any Matt Ashida, you get to gain a memory. And that's kind of cool. It's quite nice. It is a free cost to play normally, but bearing in mind, you can literally just digivolve it in the breeding area and then bring it out. And at that stage, you've paid nothing but every time you play Matashida, you're, you're gaining a memory. So that's pretty cool. So I like it. 
And then we got ourselves an inheritable skill coming in here as well. When you attack, limited to once during your turn, and your Digimon is Gabumon Bond of Friendship, you may activate this Digimon. And now, my opinion on Gabumon Bond of Friendship changes. Because you see, when I'm making it active once during my turn and deleting essentially two level or getting two level fives back to the bottom of my opponent's deck, I should say, I'm feeling pretty good. But when I'm making myself active twice during my turn, and I'm attacking three times with the same Digimon, again, you don't have jamming, but you got 14,000 power, you are unlikely to be deleted by a security card. And every time I'm attacking, I'm taking a level 5 from my opponent, putting it under their deck. Sure, they can protect themselves by only having level 6s and level 7s out, but let's be real. How often can you realistically, during your turn, make sure that you end your turn with only level 6s and level 7s out? And I'm sorry, but I think this Gabimon transforms Gabimon Bond of Friendship from a, that's a good card, to that is a great card. Making myself active once is fine. Making myself active twice is good. Making myself active twice and taking out essentially a level 5 or below every time I attack, which is going to be three times, that is when I think we get into legitimate great territory here. This makes a huge difference. And look, you saw it on the thumbnail. We've seen it on a bunch of stuff. Essentially, at this stage... You know there is a Matashida we need to look at as well. We've got a free cost to play, but bearing in mind Gabamon will turn that into a two cost, which is pretty gosh darn good. And then what we've got here is, once during your turn, when a Digimon named Gabumon or Garurumon moves from your breeding area to your battle area, gain one memory and draw one card. Oh, that's Redonk, ladies and gentlemen. You either keep it as a level 3 or you go up into your level 4 Garurumon. And bearing in mind, you can play lots of Gabumon and Garurumon here. There are a bunch that have been released across all the sets we've seen so far. That is not going to be an issue. You gain a memory and draw a card. But bearing in mind, if you've got multiple of these Matashida down then actually you're going to be gaining... Well, let's say you've got three down. You gain three memory and draw three cards. Bearing in mind, each of these is essentially a two-cost tamer as long as there is one of these new Gabumon on the field. And we are just into ridiculous combo territory at this stage. Because essentially, you're playing Matashida as a two-cost, hopefully. And then every time, you know, it's every other turn. One turn you hatch an egg and then you go into your main phase, you evolve it. The next turn, you bring it out during your breeding phase. So essentially, it's every other turn. But every other turn, you get to at least draw one and gain a memory, possibly quite a bit more. Which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Bearing in mind, you've got the same security skill we've seen on every Tamer so far, whereby you have just, well, you, you play it for free if it comes out as a security card. And if you don't play it for free, you're probably only paying a two cost because you're probably going to play four Gabamon. You're going to get it down sooner rather than later. And this is just getting silly at this stage. Extra activations, taking out my opponent's Digimon, gaining memory, drawing cards. Oh yeah, and we've got a second skill as well. Once during your turn, you may Digivolve one of your Gabumon into a Gabumon Bond of Friendship from your hand by paying its Digivolution cost, ignoring any Digivolution requirements. I.e. you Digivolve your level 3 Gabumon into a level 7 Gabumon Bond of Friendship for just free memory. Now, you do have to discard the top two security cards, and then at the end of your turn, if your security is one or above, you get deleted. But it's like I said with Agamon Bond of Courage in the previous video. You need to plan this, right? If you've got no security cards, there's no downside. Because all you do here is you go to trash two security. Oh, wait, I can't, so I don't. You do not lose when you trash security with no security. You lose when you get attacked with no security. And then you would not delete it at the end of your turn because you've got no security. You stay around if you've got no security. And this, it's once per Matashida, but... If you've got multiple Matashida and multiple Gabumon down, and you've got multiple Gabumon Bond of Friendship in your hand, 
you can activate this multiple times. And yeah, fine, you're trashing all your security, but then you're going a bit nuts. Bearing in mind every one of these is going to end up attacking like three times, you're going to win the game. And that's the thing here. If you are evolving this new Gabumon into Gabumon Bond of Friendship, then sure, you're trashing two security cards, but you're attacking three times. And if I'm trashing two security cards, but I'm attacking three times, like if my opponent's got two security left, I attack... Take a security, skill makes me active. Attack, take a security, Gabamon makes me active. Attack and win the game. So sure, yeah, there are massive downsides to evolving straight off from a level 3 into a level 7. But you don't just do it willy-nilly on the first turn of the game. That's ridiculous. What you do is you use this on the perfect turn. And when it's the perfect turn and you do this, you go absolutely nuts and you win the game and life is good. I'm just going to take all three of these as a whole. I'm going to give them five wussies. It's just ridiculous at this stage. All of this is just absolutely ridiculous. We are into silly territory here. And I think this is another level 7 that you are going to see a lot of, ladies and gentlemen. Because this really is just over the top ridiculously good. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.